All right, incremental refreshes. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the different refresh options available within the cube itself, and then we're gonna create incremental refresh reports, and I'll show you how those work. So let's get started. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create an intelligent cube. Okay, now I'm gonna add some attributes and metrics to the report. And I'm gonna make this time-based just so we can clearly demonstrate um, how this works. So we'll add year, quarter, we'll add all of our time attributes here. Okay, now I'm gonna add web order number since these are orders, just to make sure we get the lowest level possible. And that's just because I wanna pull in a lot of records so we can compare run times. Okay, now I'm gonna add some metrics. We'll add just sales, units, and profit. All right, so now we have our report template all squared away for our cube. Now let's go ahead and go through these cube options. So we're gonna click Data, Configure Intelligent Cube. We're gonna come down to Data, Refresh. All right, now these are our refresh options within the cube itself. Now, meaning every time we run this cube with this filter, how should we handle the results that are returned compared to what's already in the cube? Okay, so you can do full refresh, which is where it'll just fully refresh the entire data set every time you run it. Dynamic refresh, insert new rows from new data and removes non-overlapping rows from old data by comparing the old and the new Intelligent Cube data filters. So basically every time this runs, it's going to insert new rows and any rows that are not within the new run are going to get dropped. Okay, update, will insert new rows and any existing rows that were there from a previous run, it will overwrite if they exist. So basically insert or update. And then obviously the last option will only insert new non-overlapping rows and any pre-existing rows will just remain there in the data set. Okay, so for this we're going to just leave it at full refresh. Okay, and we'll click OK. Now let's create our filter. Now this filter is going to act as our kind of like our initial load. So we're going to suppose that in this scenario, in this use case, we want to keep track of a bunch of historical data, but we also want to maintain this data set going forward. So as new data comes in, we want to add to this data set. So we're going to consider this filter within the cube itself as kind of like our initial load of all historical data, okay? So for that, we're going to pull in year, okay? And now we're going to select all years except for the current year, all right? Now, now in reality, when you do this, you're probably just going to want to load all of your history or everything you have at, to date. Um, but for this demonstration, I want to show you how to first load the cube using this filter, using the filter within the cube and show you these refresh options. And then I want to show you how to add new data. So in order to do that, we're going to leave out 2020 and we're going to add that as new data, okay, when we create our incremental refresh report. So we're going to select everything not in 2020. Okay. Now all this you should be familiar with um, this is just a regular old Intelligent Cube, but I want to show you we're going to run before and after because uh, I want to show you the performance considerations here, okay? So we will save this cube. Cube with full refresh. Now I quickly want to show you uh, if you're running really large cubes, you're going to have to uh, change the governing settings in VLDB. So I'll change the timeout. Zero means infinite. We'll ch let the row limit be infinite. So zero. And even the intermediate row limit will set to zero. This will remove the row limit restrictions on our cube. So we'll save and close. And then we'll save our cube. And let's run our cube. Now let's see how long this takes to run. Remember, this is a full refresh. So there's over probably about 4 million rows that I'm going to actually be loading here. 
All right, so now our cube has finished loading and you can see the execution time. That took about a minute, a little less than a minute, 53 seconds. Okay, so let's remember that. The full refresh took about 53 seconds. So now let's save and close our cube. All right, now let's create a report against our cube. And take a look at the data that's in there because I want to do a before and after. So we'll show you the data before we create the incremental refresh report and then after. So we're just going to roll up to year here. We'll select year and we'll just select sales. Let's run this. Okay, so now you can see I've rolled up sales to year to the year level and we have every year except 2020. Okay, so to load all this historical data, we're going to pretend this was like our initial load of our data set, all right? And this is a data set we want to maintain going forward. So this is a great use case for incremental refresh reports, right? So that load took about, what did we say, about 53 seconds. Um, and we loaded all of our history here. Um, now this was a very simple cube. Uh, there wasn't much going on here. So if you have large cubes with a lot of metrics and a lot of complexity, I'm sure you know that they can take a long time to load. I've heard of situations where they take hours to load. Now, if you only have to load a large cube that takes hours to run once and load all the history one time, that's not bad, okay? Um, but you don't want to do that every single day, keep reloading data unnecessarily, especially if the data is not going to change, all right? So now let's use an incremental refresh report and see how we can append data to this cube or see various other options we might have. So we'll save and close this report. We'll call this our cube report. All right, so now to create an incremental refresh report, we're going to right click our cube, define incremental refresh report. And now you have various options here. Okay, so let's go through them. Let's just talk through them. So you have the first option here, which is update. Now this will insert new rows from the report data and overwrite overlapping rows between old cube data and report data. So what this means is, now after we select this option, we're going to create another filter here. Okay, so what this means is it's going to compare the results from our new filter that we're going to create but we haven't got to yet versus the data in the cube. If there are new rows, it will insert them. If it pulls back duplicate rows or pre-existing rows, it will overwrite them. Okay, so we'll insert or update. All right, now the second option here, insert, this will only insert new rows. Okay, the delete option here, this will remove overlapping rows from the cube. All right, so you can think of this like what if you wanted to purge data from your cube, right? What if you wanted to limit the size of your cube, and if you had really old data, you wanted to purge that? Well, you could define an incremental refresh report that does deletes. All right, and maybe it deletes, I don't know, any data older than two years, something like that, right? And of course, lastly, update only. This will only update rows, right? So any rows that are in common between what's in the data set and this new filter we defined, it will update those, okay? And that's all it will do, all right? So for this, we're going to just select insert. We're going to suppose that we only want to add new data, right? So we're going to be adding 2020, but realistically, if this is sales information, maybe every day you want to append the previous day's sales, right? But in our case, we're going to append 2020 data. So we'll click OK. And now you'll notice it brought up a new filter here. So now we can define a new filter just for this incremental refresh. So we're going to edit this existing filter here. That's just our initial filter for the cube when we created the cube. We're going to edit this. We don't, we don't want to do that. We want to define a new filter. So we're going to choose inlist 2020. Now, obviously, this is a just a demonstration. In reality, you'd want this to be dynamic, right? You'd want to append the previous day's sales, or maybe, um, or maybe a after every year is finished, you want to append that previous year's data, something like that. You'd want this to be a little more dynamic, I would think, in, in, in real life. But for demonstration purposes, we're just going to choose 2020, and we'll click OK. So now you remember, our previous, our, when we previously ran the report, it only went up to 2019. So now we're going to save and close this, and we'll call this 2020 update. All right, great. So now let's run our update. 
And let's see how long this takes to run. All right, so now you can see this refresh only took 25 seconds to run, so less than half the time of our initial run. Okay, so now we can save and close this. And now let's rerun our report. And now you can see we've appended 2020 data. Okay, so now we didn't waste time refreshing data that was already there that hasn't changed that we didn't need to. Okay, and we appended new data to our cube. All right, and it took less than half the time to run. All right, so now we know we want to maintain this cube going forward. So it's common to purge data so this cube doesn't grow out of control. Because remember, these cubes are being stored in memory. So we definitely want to manage the size of these cubes. Okay, so let's close this. And let's define a new incremental refresh report. Only this time, let's define a delete. We'll click OK. All right, so now again, we'll edit our filter. And we're going to choose to remove, eh, let's say, 2014, 2015, and 2016. We'll remove 2020 from here. And let's OK. Now, again, in reality, you'd want this to make this filter dynamic. But for demo purposes, this is fine. So we will save and close this. And we'll call this uh, purge cube. Now let's run our purge. And now you can see that it only took three seconds to run. So we'll close this. And let's rerun our cube report. And now we only have 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020. Okay. So our deletes were successful. So let's close our report. And now what you can do is you can schedule these updates to run. So maybe you want to purge every week or every month. Maybe you want to run your update every day, right? So that is how incremental refreshes work with Intelligent Cubes. All right, so that'll do it. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And also check out jamestechtips.com for more BI-related content. And thanks for watching.